with us from Washington is political reporter for Time Magazine, Zeke Miller. Zeke, good to see you. Thanks for having me. All right, so the attacks last weekend, as well as the recent police-involved shootings, have drawn response from both candidates. Uh, how do these incidents impact the race when looking at voter opinions? You know, these are the sorts of, you know, we, we can call them October surprises, September surprises, late-breaking events that as the majority of Americans actually finally tune into this race, we've been talking about this for more than a year now. Most Americans are finally sitting down to their kitchen table or looking at their, their options for November 8th. Just about now, ballots are out and then deciding who to vote for. These are the sorts of things that people look at and they evaluate the way the candidates respond to determine, do I envision that person as president? Do I like the way that person handled this situation that was outside of their control? But did they see, did they make me feel like they are the, the right leader for this country? So I think what we're seeing is Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump this week trying to show, trying to sort of, it, 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 there's an element of acting involved because of course when they're in the job they'll do it differently, but they're, what they have to do is show how they would lead and they're both trying to do that in very different ways uh, to two very different sorts of uh, scenarios. Zeke, just a short time ago Trump was speaking to a group of pastors and here's what he had to say about the recent shootings. I'm a tremendous believer in the police and law enforcement because we need that for ourselves. We need it. And I've really gotten the endorsement from so many different groups, and they're great people. They're great people. Now, great people, you always have problems. You have somebody in there that either makes a mistake, that's bad, or that chokes. I must tell you, I watched the shooting, in particular, in Tulsa. And that man was hands up. That man went to the car, hands up, put his hand on the car. I mean, it, to me, it looked like he did everything you're supposed to do. And he looked like a really good man. Zeke, we know that Trump's been trying to court the black vote, but does this kind of talk help him with that effort? You know, this is a, you know, an, an, an example of the sort of thing we've seen from Donald Trump in the last couple of weeks, where he's been trying to to empathize and show some and, and, and show some uh, a personal side of himself. Here he is sort of reflecting on his own observations of a very controversial, a very emotional scenario uh, that, that you know that a lot of the country is talking about right now, and that is the type of thing that will help him. The question is, will it, you know will it counteract all of the things that happened in the rest in that speech today? I mean, he had Don King uh, with him at that church, and Don King uh, used the. N word, um, you know, he he's he's uh, sort of explained his African American outreach as essentially, what else do you have to lose? This is a very different sort of outreach, the more traditional type of candidate outreach. If he sticks with this for the next seven weeks or so, that will actually make a difference. If it's still jumbled with everything else, it might not actually penetrate with those voters. Right. In fact, I mean, uh, just yesterday when he was talking about uh, the African American community, specifically with Chicago, he said that Chicago was more dangerous than Afghanistan. Last time I checked, uh, this year alone, 31,000 people have been killed in Afghanistan, only 530. Uh, in Chicago. But Zeke, I want to ask you about something else that the Trump uh, campaign is facing right now. Questions about his foundation following a Washington Post report out yesterday that says Trump used $285,000 from his charity to settle legal problems. His campaign released uh, a statement calling the story factually inaccurate. They said the reporter was biased, but then they offered no specificity about what was actually uh, inaccurate. Uh, how is this going to play out over the next couple of days uh, and at the debate on Monday? You know, this is going guaranteed to remain in the, in the bloodstream. Obviously, questions about Trump's foundation, Trump's business interest will be at the forefront um, sort of as we go into uh, the, the voting season. And that first debate, he'll certainly get a question about it. That response, personally attacking reporters, in a lot of ways, one of the oldest tricks in politics, try to de deflect and accuse the, the reporter of bias, when in fact, none is there, say the story is wrong and provide no evidence. And in fact, that statement include, included one misstatement, the notion that there was no motive for Trump doing this. This was you know, allegedly part of a, some sort of settlement with a, with a local municip municipality there to settle a personal suit against one of his companies. And then also sort of fudging just how much Trump has given to his charity over the years, saying tens of millions of dollars, when really reporters have been trying to get this information from him for a year now. And he's provided almost no details. And in fact, it looks like it's a much smaller amount of money than most people think for somebody of his wealth would give to their own foundation. Mm, and uh, David Farenthold is a reporter from The Washington Post who's been doing that digging on the Trump Foundation. Uh, Zeke Miller in Washington. Thanks so much, Zeke. Thanks for having me. And the first presidential debate is less than a week away. Clinton and Donald Trump will go head-to-head -head at Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. That is Monday, September 26th. 
Our primetime coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can stream the debate right here on CBSN.